Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the career ladder of software engineers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what is the career ladder for software engineers? Well, the career ladder is going to look a little bit l different. I would say that it's less of a ladder. Well, it is a ladder, technically, but I, I like to think about it more as a tree. So the reason why I like to call it a tree is because it starts out practically the same way, like or it can it can vary a little bit. You can be on some of the roots. You can start in a little bit of a range, but usually it starts out the same way. And then you move up the trunk of the tree, which is a very linear, like it's basically an elevator thing, until you reach the top level or like where the branches start, and then it starts branching where you can go and become, well this or that and I'll touch on a few of these things and I'll give you some considerations for each of these uh, roles so the first and foremost thing where practically everybody starts is that you have zero coding skills or you have very low coding skills you're a tester or a college graduate or whatever you're, you're something you haven't really done this in a professional manner your value at this stage is going to be absolute zero nobody cares about you all the things that you've been hearing about that IT has a lot of money and there's a lot of jobs and so forth they have, this is all true but it's not applicable to you because you're not one of the chosen ones and in order to, for you to become one of the chosen ones or the uh, if you want to become an anointed you're gonna have to work and you're gonna have to work hard I promise you you're gonna have to work hard and on average you're gonna have to be invest a, a personal uh, well, you're going to have to invest in yourself for about one to five years statistically. That is how long it's going to take you to become a junior software developer. And that is, uh, it's very easy for you to verify my, my facts on that. Go to literally any job posting. Like just go and search. Don't go to Google or uh, YouTube. Don't go to your forums. Don't listen to your friends. Don't do any of that shit. They're gonna give you the wrong. Th the the wrong. Uh, they're they're gonna give you an answer, and the people who are selling you courses are gonna give you the best answer, which is three months or three weeks or whatever. And it's not gonna be accurate. The best thing for you is to go to the job postings because they don't. They they they're not telling to. They're not trying to bullshit you. They're not trying to be nice. They're hiring people, and they're gonna list on average one to five years of the work prior work experience which is the toughest part for you so to start off with that is the that's your first step of the ladder to get into the industry to get an entry-level job and there's uh, not that like, on average there's a lot of companies of course like that's where the hype is that higher juniors they hire junior software developers as long as you have work experience but if you don't have any work experience that's going to be your first challenge so now let's just assume that you manage to get into the industry you have your first job cool so now you're a junior software developer your first and primary focus at this point is going to be to adopt as much learning as you can possibly that's going to dictate everything else the best thing for you is to get quality practice in a firm or a, com and a product company or something like that where they work in accordance with what the majority of the industry is doing so that you're you get your skills up to scratch and after a few years of doing that as as I said you're still in that one to five year range because if I mean if it takes you five years to get to a junior level uh, uh, yeah, you, you're at some point you're go but by the end of those five years you should be able to reach a mid-level developer skill level now a mid-level which is going to be the next thing this is the trunk I'm talking about uh, you the difference between a junior and a mid-level is just that you have a few years of work experience on paper this is where your value starts to skyrocket uh, usually you will see a very very big difference between the interest uh, for your CV and your profile assuming now as I said you have to have quality experience if you don't have that you're worth nothing uh, but if you do have that you it's gonna change like that it's uh, just even a year is enough for you to start getting calls from recruiters who probably didn't give you the time of day before 
and after two or three, like around three years, that's it's going to get really serious for you. Like uh, the interest for your profile is going to go up quite drastically. And this is where you start getting into the space of being a mid-level. And a mid-level developer is, uh, you can check yourself. Do you feel as if you know how most of the work that you do uh, works? Like, do you need to ask for help all the time? Or can you, you ask for help sometimes, but for the most part, you kind of know what you're doing. Congratulations, now you're a mid-level developer. This is the level where most developers stay. You can just produce work and you can get requests and you know how to answer uh, questions such as how long do you need to build this thing? This is the mid-level. Now the next step for you is going to take be either like um, this is where it starts branching a little bit. Usually people go up and become a senior because there's it's a bit of ambiguous, it's a very ambiguous the difference between a uh, mid-level and a senior for a lot of people but I'm gonna make it two branches because usually by the time you get to be a mid-level you get the choice now. Now you can either stay a software developer and go up and become a senior software developer or you could in theory become a manager or an HR person or something like that which is something that I've seen. I have co-workers and friends who basically they, st they worked as a professional software developer for a few years and then they realize that you know what the coding thing isn't the thing I want I'm gonna be a um, a community manager or I'm gonna be a uh, HR person or something like that I'm gonna be a recruiter etc etc so your options are now opening up because now you have the tech skills and that gives a bit of um, a, a bit of value to the to the company so all you now have to do is to decide do you want to become more of a people person and a manager or do you want to become a more hardened professional. Even at this level I would say that you're ready to take on your fur you could in theory transition into a, a team lead type of position or a tech lead type of position where uh, most of what you do well you do some coding perhaps but most of it is planning out work and managing stakeholders and talking to customers and stuff like that. If you have the social skills because that is 99% of what you need in order to do that job the technical skills are of course a part of it but it's more important that you have the people skills and the administrative skills well now you're ready to do that the other part is to be a senior developer which is where you basically just become even better at you continue becoming a better developer and you become a leader of developers as opposed to a follower and you know that you're a senior software developer when all your stakeholders come to you first to ask questions and all your co-workers come to you for advice that's when you're a senior de most of the time you're going to be a senior developer if you are trusted to make the, the highest most high stake decisions in the company and everybody wants your thoughts on practically everything you're a senior developer and that is uh, that's the gold standard for all companies this is where everybody wants to hire these people as long as they can find them in the right age range usually and then after that uh, the next part of your career ladder you can stay here as well and you can make quite a lot of money and a lot of developers stay here forever uh, but you can also move up into a CTO type of position if you want to start your own company usually I mean you could technically get it somewhere else but it's a little bit trickier that way uh, you can become a uh, an architect and uh, you can also of course become like a full-time manager or something like that just as you could at the mid-level but usually it's it's a little bit rare that a mid-level developer goes and becomes an architect or a CTO because these these uh, roles although it is possible for you to absolutely I mean if you if you have the knack for it and you have the opportunity you can absolutely transition in that into that role immediately but usually the architect and the CTO in an ideal scenario at the very least are people who have a bit of work experience they've been doing this for a little while so they know how to to talk to customers and how to design systems and so forth there's a bit of a difference between the architect and CTO like the CTO is much 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 well depending of course on the company now because an architect's primary focus is usually around delivering on projects a, C a um, CTO is more business oriented and more company oriented so a CTO might be someone who is much more engaged in the uh, in the discussions about the company itself like how is your company doing as opposed to a architect that is much more interested in discussions with stakeholders in within the company around system design for example or 
the, it, it, it usually is that the CTO is the top level, and then you have the architect underneath, where the or the I mean they can of course collaborate and so forth, but the architect in many cases is much more about uh, uh, understanding how to uh, how to bring a vision to life, where the CTO is more about what's up ahead, like what's the next thing we're going to do, what's the direction of the company and vision in that way, and so if you reach these levels, uh, this is going to be the end of your career practically or this is going to be the peak if you can reach a you don't even have to want you might not even want to go up to this level but if you do get to that level there's not really much more that you can do if you're a CTO you're basically running the entire company and if you're an architect you're as high up as you can be practically without actually running the company and you I mean if you don't want to go that high you can all there are other branches you can go into specialist work like when you're a senior or mid-level developer you can become a machine learner or like a data scientist or something like that and branch out or you can be become a, uh, a you can start your own company and become like an expert consultant so there's like tons of different paths that you can take but these are the main ones usually so what I want you to take away from this is that the average career ladder for a software engineer is going to be junior level mid-level, senior level, architect, CTO, or like whatever, and like at that level, when you're at that level, you're, you can basically, in, in many cases, you can invent your own titles depending on what type of niche you're looking for. There are so many variants of what you could be doing. At that level, it's kind of blurry exactly what you do. You're you're a bit of everything at that point. An architect is one part an engineer, usually, and one part a product manager, and a CTO is one part a a business developer, and one part an engineer. <clears throat> so it becomes a little bit blurry, and, but there is other combinations that you can slice this, uh, this to, and each CTO is going to have a different profile in many cases, and each uh, architect might also have a different profile. Uh, it's, uh, these roles are so wide. But and this is going to be the average, the average career ladder for you as a software engineer. And you kind of have to decide the path that you want to take. My advice to you is to get up to a mid-level software developer's role first and foremost, and then start to ask yourself the question: What is the thing that I want to work with long term? If you want to be more of a people person, you can start looking towards becoming more of a team lead or manager or so forth fairly early on. If you really love the tech, you can stay in tech for quite some time. But at some point, if you want to get even higher, those social skills are going to start to matter. Have a great day.